Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. So this is a reading for what is usually known as the Lion's Gate Portal, sometimes called the 8-8 Portal, like August 8th. If you've been with me any time at all, you know that I almost never take anything at face value and will will kind of root around and, and see what the, um, the origins of things are. You know, is the portal a thing? So having done that and having uh, asked some questions on my own, I have my own sort of take on it, my theory. And the, so Sirius, right? So the star Sirius, which is actually a binary star, Sirius A and B, which has its own cycle from, kind of from our perspective. The two stars, they uh, rotate each other in a binary, right? It's a binary star system. And it's a 50 year rotation. So in 2019, they were, at their most visible as two stars for us, looking at them, right? We could see them, right, as two stars next to each other. And then when we get to 2044, they will be at their most sort of combined, one and two, together, seen, you know, as a single entity. And that's sort of interesting to me. The other thing is that it's rising, the heliacal rising, our ability to see it, right? It gets, it's far enough away from the sun that we can see it. It's like Venus that way, right? Venus disappears for a period of time because she's so close to the sun that we, right? There's too much light, we can't see her. And the same with Sirius and other stars. So the Right, the heliacal rising is when it is visible to us with the naked eye. And it's different depending on your latitude. So actually in Cairo, the heliacal rising will be around the 1st of August, somewhere between July 31st and the 1st. Uh, here at my latitude, it's going to be at around August 10th. So it's more, right, it's more of a long period of time. Uh, the earliest in the Northern Hemisphere, for those folks, you know, 10 degrees and below from the equator, um, is around July 17th, 15, 16, 17th. And then when we get to 60 degrees, it's September 2nd. So it's this long space of time that Sirius becomes visible in different places. So my feeling about this is that if we, if we think of Sirius right, as this harbinger, he was a harbinger of the flooding of the Nile for the ancient Egyptians. So if we think of this rising of Sirius as a kind of energetic flooding for us, and that there's a whole long space of time where it can occur from, you know, sort of mid-July all the way to mid-September. How do we maybe take advantage of that space? What does it mean? for us. So I've got Aries through Pisces. I've pulled all the cards, but I haven't looked at them. Um, there are four Oracle decks and two Tarot decks. Now the underlying a kind of uh, collective experience. We have this wise woman of the grove.
And this is seeming like something, right? Like something seen, right? Like Sirius is seen. So there's something about that too. That what was previously unseen is now, you know, totally visible for us. And that it might in fact not be what we expected. The bottom of the deck is letting go autumn. And that's certainly the direction that we are heading in, in the Northern Hemisphere, at least. Then we have sun. And this right here, sun and stars, and these two people who are waiting. They feel like they're waiting for something. And there is a sense, right, the sense of anticipation. And the bottom of this deck is the equator, which is interesting to me, right, with Sirius being this binary star, the two. Uh, another thing that's interesting is that we call it the Lionsgate portal, I presume, uh, because it happens during Leo season, but Sirius is actually in Cancer. Uh, partway through Cancer at 14 degrees, 24 minutes. And as part of the dog star, Taunus Major. Then interestingly, we have this elephant, learn from the past. And this has been coming up a lot in readings and it, it feels a little contradictory to me a little bit because I've been banging on about how we shouldn't use the past as a map to the future. But I think it's more about Right, learning from mistakes, learning from things we did that didn't work out. So that we don't repeat. And then the bottom of the card is very Leo. Badger spirit, be fearless and bold. And then we have the lovers, more of this binary energy. And there's something about that too. Not so much here about choice, but these two stars rotating together. There's something about that, the symbolism of the binary star system. The bottom of this deck is the Nine of Cups. Satisfaction. And also uh, some boldness. She seems uh, like a bold character, um, a slightly mischievous character. And then we have the Seven of Wands, more, right, rotation to two beings circling one another. And at the bottom, the Two of Swords, and that, right, more more explicitly about choice. So maybe right, how we've made choices in the past to perhaps do things differently. And then we have this detox card, which says cleanse and restore yourself. And this can be an intense time, the middle of a season, whether it's summer or winter, right? That space that's about a month past, month or so past the solstice, tends to be most intense, right? July and January. So something about about an easefulness, right? This, this grace, this letting go as we move into the next season. And then the bottom of the deck is more Leo, 
would feel loved and proud. So let's see where we are for everybody. Uh, and I'll put uh, some links in the description if you want to know more about Sirius, about Heliacal, it's Heliacal rising, about Sirius itself, uh, what we know. Aries, wolf spirit, family. Magnetism and attraction. Turkey spirit, give with gratitude and grace. The Knight of Pentacles. The Hermit. And the Ace of Swords. And I'm going to leave this last card for the end. And this feels very sort of un Aries. And maybe that's. Maybe that's part of it. You know, Aries is sort of the lone wolf, but this is explicitly about family. So not being the lone wolf, really being more of a leader. You know, Aries is associated with the emperor, but uh, I actually don't really associate leadership as such with Aries. Uh, that Aries leads in the sense of going first, as opposed to acting as a leader. And interestingly, I think here in the United States, we've only had one Aries president uh, out of the almost 50 presidents that we've had. There's only been one Aries. So Aries is generally, right, they're going to go first. And if you follow, that's great. And if not, great too. But there's something here, uh, a suggestion, Aries, to temper your usual way of doing things. To be more concerned with your pack. And then also, right, magnetism, attraction, waiting, right? Normally Aries would be right out the door, right? The speed card in this deck um, or the action movement card. But here to, to cultivate magnetism. And then we've got Turkey. I mean, is there ever a bird that was less Aries than the turkey? I mean, wild turkeys can fly a little bit, but, you know, not, not like the peregrine falcon or, um, you know, other raptor-like birds. And also, you know, this, um, this idea of generosity, which I, you know, sometimes Aries can be generous, but it's almost like a side effect, <laughs> right, of going first or of being impulsive. And then the Knight of Pentacles, for goodness sake, the slowest knight in the deck. And the Hermit. And then we have the Ace of Swords. So this new idea. So there seems to be, Aries, a suggestion that during this period of inundation, Right, this period when the energy is flooding. 
that it might be wise, beneficial, useful to take things more slowly, to be more receptive, uh, to be more earthy, even, right, with the Knight of Pentacles and the Hermit and this kind of wolf spirit. To take new ideas on board. Uh, that's another Aries thing that I can testify to, the tendency to believe that we're right, to really enjoy being right, um, to not consider other perspectives necessarily. Last card. Ha! <laughs> Ubuntu, I am because we are. Compassion for others. Oh, Aries. Waiting for others to catch up. Being more mindful about others around you who may not be as fiery as yourself. Taking a moment to uh, to rest, to to be receptive, and maybe the generosity, you know, is not so much about like donating money or or that kind of thing, but giving your like your energy, your fire to other people, sharing, right? Like that sort of feels like this hermit here with this lantern that's filled with fire that you might be able to share your fire. Um, because you might, uh, you know, be, be better placed, better uh, capable to take in and channel this kind of inundation of energy. And to kind of do that for others as an act of generosity, an act of grace. All right, Aries. Taurus. Hmm. Spirit guardian of spring with activation. Hearth, comfort. Oh, very Taurus. Armadillo spirit, set healthy boundaries. The Six of Wands. The Four of Pentacles. Five of Cups. So you, Taurus, I think, are being advised to take it a little easy, to be um, to be mindful of this, right, of this enormous energy that might be coming in. Because there is, right, there's this activation happening. And there's even in this card, right, there's a fire and there's all of this sparkly energy going on. Then we have these boundaries. So to, to be aware that, that you might be feeling activated. You know, Taurus can, can ground a lot of energy, but we don't, right? We, we all have other, we all have other energies besides Taurus. 
So this, this feels like being, like really leaning in to that uh, Taurus earthiness. Because even this, all right, this is the Six of Wands, but it's not, you know, it's not terribly fiery. She has red hair, but there's this, you know, sort of dark background. There aren't a whole bunch of other people in this scene. She's alone. Uh, there's, you know, she is standing on the ground. There's, you know, seems to be greenery or flowers sort of around her. Maybe she's in a garden. And then of course the four of pentacles, the very, right, the definition of grounded, solid, four of earth. And then with this five of cups, there is a sense of focus, right? The other, the other cups, the other bowls, they're spilled and she isn't even paying attention at all to that. She is paying attention to this cup that is left, that she's chosen. With the, the thing that is really important. So there may, there may also be a tendency for, for you or perhaps others to become scattered to have your energy, you know, kind of bouncing around to different things, to feel overwhelmed, to feel, you know, that, that there's all of this stuff swirling around and you don't quite know where to go or what to do. But if you lean in to that earthy Taurus energy that you have, if you do set some boundaries. I mean, I think that the, like everything else, boundaries are a nuanced subject. Um, you know, setting good boundaries doesn't mean blocking out anything that ever challenges you. It doesn't mean having right rigidity. It really means being mindful. about the sort of income and outgo and that your boundaries might vary seasonally. You know, we are also, right, we reach this peak at the summer solstice and then kind of in this July space of high sun and high heat and, and here, or at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and that now we are shifting, right? You can already feel it. The things, right? The energy is softening. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you reach kind of this peak of cold. And now that too is softening. So to be, right, be mindful of the energy, of how much you have, whether or not you're feeling scattered. Yeah. Translucence, love the darkness, yeah. <laughs> so to be, right, to be the earth, to be that dark loam, that cool space, during this high energy period. I mean, if we think about the Nile uh, oh, flooding, right, the earth absorbs that. That's part of what, you know, the whole purpose of the thing, right? It floods and the fields, right, become, you know, moistened. So to invite the ability to absorb and to let it, you know, kind of flow through you to where it needs to go. To be the grounding for yourself and maybe even for others. Taurus. All right. Gemini. 
food stools growth. Mm. Purity, ice. Parrot spirit, watch your words. Two of cups. Page of wands. And the queen of swords. Well, you know what this feels like to me, Gemini, is, right, it's sort of an activation for you. And maybe it's because you, uh, you have this affinity with this binary nature of Sirius. And you have uh, a lot of experience of in dealing with a lot of energy, with a lot of data, a lot of stuff. That you have this, uh, the skills of Mercury to be able to channel lots of energies. So that this could be a really fertile time for you for ideas. Right, because we do have this growth, right? Things right, growing on you. You know, maybe something, maybe something has grown on you or grown within your mind that you didn't notice that you weren't aware of and that there's something here that's like that is like an activation or a um you know a bell sounding or uh you know something that gets your attention like this horse that if you've been really occupied that you may really you may really feel this call. And when with the watch your words, I think we should always do that. Words being like spells, like magic spells at all times. So that we watch our words and we watch our thoughts. But now, especially in this moment, and then there's this binary image. And I want to say that it is related to this. And maybe these two figures are the horse and the figure under the ice coming together. That there's some, that there's some transformation that's going to take place. That ideas that were previously disparate, that didn't perhaps make sense to you in your head. Maybe there were two things that you couldn't reconcile or integrate. Now that will be possible. And then we have this page of wands. The inspired moment. You know, and here, right, it's her head that's all lit up. Right, the idea, the inspiration is lighting up her whole head. And then this masterful queen of swords who is able to take the idea or ideas and turn them kind of into these butterflies that she can send out into the world. This mastery, mastery of ideas, of inspirations, Gemini, that, that something that previously couldn't come together for some reason, now you will be able to integrate or bring together. Opulence. <laughs> and it's time to lead. So maybe this is your moment to go first, 
Gemini. I don't think you have a problem with that. But maybe it's also your moment to be singular. As Aries is being asked to hold back, to, to be more receptive. Maybe you are being asked to be more singular, to go from this pair to this one. To be, right, there's almost here too, there's a kind of, right, as the queen, she kind of has this sort of horn thing going on. Right, to lead intellectually. I mean, it might even be to make, right, to make a decision to take a stand in some way, right, to make a, to make a choice and stand by it. Gemini. That is interesting. Interesting, all the ways that everybody is being asked to be different or to, to be more themselves, I guess. Cancer. Foggy bog, patience. Not really a cancer thing as a cardinal sign. Oh, on the other hand, we have bushfires with fury. Cow spirit, the miracles are endless. The nine of wands. And the ten of wands. And the Eight of Wands, <laughs> although that particular Eight of Wands. Oh, Cancer. You seem to, similar to Aries, maybe this is a cardinal sign thing. We'll see what happens when we get to Libra and Capricorn. It seems like you were being asked to hold space, to be the one who is balanced, right? to be this earthy sort of cow energy. Because of all this, right, all of this fire, right, these, these fiery bushfires going on, and then the eight, nine, and ten of wands, I mean, in this particular Ten of Wands, where things are burning up. But this Eight, right? This Eight is not about something incoming, but about something outgoing, right? It's about a wish being made. And maybe it is that the cardinal signs have the capacity to hold the fire. To really hold the fire. Right, as the fixed sign right, of Taurus could hold the earth. Um, and the mutable signs can find their way in the confusion and choose a direction. So how, right, how the different signs work together. That the cardinal signs are used to this initiatory energy. And so they can hold it for others so that it doesn't, you know, rage out of control.
And so maybe this is also, right, each sign kind of leaning in to an aspect of itself. Um, Aries leaning into an ability to lead uh, a kind of openness of spirit. And then Taurus into its earthiness and Gemini into its ability to navigate through data and fast moving energies. And now you to be a kind of carer, to be this very nurturing, right? Cows are a very nurturing energy. Um, nut is a cow goddess. Um, also Hathor appears as a cow. Maybe it's only Hathor, I'm not sure. But either way, right, the sort of mother goddess energy that can support and nurture people during these really hot times. Hmm. Be still and listen to the spirits. So to be, to be a still place, to be a sanctuary in the storm for yourself and for others, Cancer. Mm. Leo. Mm. Huh. Trust. Gravity. Swan spirit, time for a deep dive. The wheel. Oh, the Queen of Swords, but a different Queen of Swords. And the Empress. <laughs> so here too, Leo, this, right, this trust and this gravity groundedness that the fixed nature of Leo, as well as right, Leo's ability to absorb fire, to manage fire, to hold fire. The fires of creativity, the fires of desire, Um, and Venus eh, is still moving through Leo. Mercury is going to retrograde into Leo. And so we have right, this Queen of Swords. The ability to, to consider to think about things deeply. I'm sort of seeing too a, a kind of um, a kind of joining up right of one sign to another. This right, Leo is sextile Gemini. So these two can help each other. Right? If Gemini is right wanting to find the way through to to discern through all of the lots and lots of information and rapid incoming energy, that Leo can assist with that. Right? That these two queens of swords. 
can get together. That in Leo, there's also this space for fortune. For the moving of the universe into different arrangements. You know, and I, I've said recently uh, in another reading that my I'm, I'm seeing the wheel lately, not as something that moves up and down. So that when the wheel is moving up, you know, our fortunes are you know, everything is looking rosy. And then when it's, a, you know, moving down that it's, that it's bad. That they're just different directions, you know, that they're more than a wheel that is upright, right, where there's a distinct up and down sort of motion. It's more like the wheel is flat, like a roulette wheel. So there is no up and down. There are just different things that show up as the wheel turns, as it is with Sirius and Sirius A and B, that they rotate one another. There's no up and down. We're just seeing them more or less lined up as they turn. Hmm. Effervescence, cultivate love. And maybe that, right, that is Leo's heart-centered job here in this space. To remind us all about love, what we love, how we love. how the power of love can move us, how the power of love can change what we want to change, how the power of love can hold us, help us to trust, help us to see the turnings of the wheel more clearly. Help us to be fruitful and to see the affluence and abundance of the universe. Love, Leo. Virgo. Playfulness. Water creation. Scarab beetle, magic moves through you. The Eight of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles. The Star. So Virgo. You are clearly going to pick up where Gemini takes off. You are going to take the idea, the choice, that vision of the Queen of Swords, and then you're going to turn it into something actually tangible. And you're going to do it Right? You're going to do it with playfulness. This, uh, this portal space, if we want to call it that, this serious energetic space goes into Virgo. If we consider that the heliacal rising won't be experienced by the poles until September. So all of this, right, there's all, right, I see you, you know, kind of looking at all of this amazing energy. Receiving. And knowing just what you want. 
and not seeing it as some kind of burden or uh, difficulty or you know even as a challenge but as something playful as play the the play of creativity all right of getting your hands in the clay my understanding that magic works through you all right mercury the magician is your guide and then of course the eight of pentacles the the joy of the doing the actual right actually getting your hands in the clay or you know knitting or cooking the meal or writing the book or um, building the house or whatever it is right that's the fun part right the actual doing you know dreaming is fun for sure but so is the doing right and then the right the reaching of the completion with the ten of pentacles and this right this ten of pentacles has a very kind of magician feel to her right with her fantastical hat right and all of these kind of things going on the sense of all the elements of reaching for the star the star that is often depicted hanging in the hermit's lantern i don't know maybe you know, sort of as a side note maybe you're getting together with an aries who is who had the hermit card come up perhaps perhaps that's something for somebody that you're going to meet up with an aries serendipity merge with the flow merge with the flow the creation the playfulness the ability to bring what you particularly want virgo in a really easy way for things to be suddenly so easeful with all of this energy flowing. Mm, Virgo. Libra. Dragon and power. outer core fluidity dolphin spirit this and that are true the knight of wands the page of swords the emperor Libra, yeah, see more of this cardinal energy coming through. I mean, first of all, power, yeah. And then this Venus coming from the sea imagery. Uh, also this nakedness. Feeling, feeling powerful, even when you're naked. Right? That's power. To be powerful when you're naked. <laughs> and then, of course, as, as a, another binary sign, that this and that are true. This is borrowed a little bit from Gemini. Um, you do tend to lean into more into one than another. 
depending on you know, how harmony or beauty is to be achieved. But here I think, I think you, unlike Virgo, are not really concerned with the details. You know, it seems to me, right, that we're finding a pattern here that the cardinal signs are being asked kind of to hold space, to be, right, to lead, to be the leadership in this time. Um, we do have the Knight of Wands who is ready. I mean, she's not on a horse here, but she's kind of looking behind, right? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? We're ready to go. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. But she is waiting. And then the Page of Swords also looks, you know, she's sort of right. she's presented her information. And now she is waiting, you know, will there be a response? What's going to happen now? Well, what happens now is the emperor. All right, integration. The ability to integrate both this and that. The ability to lead. The ability to just to see the value and power of beauty. The value and power of uh, of feminine energy of women, perhaps, in fact. And kind of joining up with Leo in a sextile, the power of love. Honor your mystical and creative force. Power, Libra. You know, and by the time we reach your season, the energy will be waning. But if you have sort of collected it for yourself, right? If you have you know, brought it together, then it can come out in this creative way as a creative force. Mm, Libra. Scorpio, always interesting. Oh, meandering pathway, flow. Animals, companionship. Mouse spirit, tend to the small things. Four of Cups, Temperance, oh, Scorpio, and the world, <laughs> oh, Scorpio, what are you being asked? To continue with this fixed sign energy of holding. Here it actually feels like holding the home space. Holding the home space. Right, particularly with um, right, with this animals card and then the tending to the small things. And this Four of Cups is a Cancer card, traditionally. 
the third decan of cancer. And then temperance with uh, these ideas of moderation. And she's, you know, she's very much at ease and at peace. Um, and this water, you know, is watering this lotus. And then the world with her, you know, her being occupied, tending, right, tending this space. So I think, Scorpio, you were being asked kind of to tend the home space. To take care of those things, which might otherwise fall by the wayside. You know, this says flow, but I sort of see this sort of Gandalf figure here as, you know, as maybe tending this space. You know, perhaps making sure, you know, that, that certain things don't get out of hand, you know, that the kudzu doesn't overgrow and take over the trees or you know, that, that things remain in good and right relationship with one another. So this, I don't know, right? Like the, you know, it's like everybody else is kind of out there. Um, you know, I don't know, corralling the energy, um, you know, absorbing the energy and you, you are holding the home space. Scorpio. You know, when everybody else kind of arrives exhausted, um, but feeling good, you know, but they come back home and all is well. All the small things have been tended to. Hmm. Open your arms. Oh, Scorpio. Can you feel that? Right? To, to open your arms to others, to enfold others. Right, to have the emotional power to be able to really hold space for others. I think it will be a challenge for you Scorpio, but totally worth it. Sagittarius. Dragonfly spirit, change. Oh, twice. Let the wind change. Oh, and interestingly, this is card 12, and this is card 24. We are doubling down on change, Sagittarius. Ooh. Owl spirit, you see clearly now. There's the magician. Four of wands. Three of Cups. Well, Sagittarius. <laughs> right, Gemini and Virgo have been working. Gemini coming up with the, the idea. Virgo really getting it into shape. And now you are going to take it and run. 
bringing the change. There is no fogginess for you. There's no fogginess for you. You see it. You see exactly where you want to go, what you want to create. There's no question. You are the magician. You have the skill and the ability. And you have the commitment. You know, the Four of Wands is, right, is stability is often seen as a card of marriage, of people coming together. Right, the commitment to follow through all the way. And then with the Three of Cups for it to be communal. That this change isn't just going to be for you, it's going to sweep up a whole lot of people. Anybody that's ready, anybody that, you know, has even a partial vibrational match to you and your vision as you come riding through, right, will get swept up in this change, in the celebration of this. Make peace with your past. So whatever has come before Sagittarius, right, you've, you've learned from it, but you're not carrying it with you. It's not a map to the future, but it's also not some sort of weight that you're carrying around with you. And then maybe, maybe this energy will give you, give you really the power, um, fortitude, strength, courage, inspiration to let that stuff go fully and finally. so that you can really move into this change and, and bring it for everyone. Sagittarius. I'm very curious about what Pisces role in all of this is going to be, but Capricorn, the next final cardinal sign. <laughs> Leadership, stag spirit, Oh, silence, snow, that's your space here in the Northern Hemisphere, Capricorn. Wombat spirit, be at home. I love him, he's so cute. Oh, two of pentacles. And the king of pentacles. And the King of Cups. Well, Capricorn. <laughs> Simple enough, yes. Right? Being in the leadership position. Uh, being, right, being a space of calm a space of peace because we are um, we are in a volatile space aren't we I mean of course here if you if you live in the United States it is particularly volatile we have a presidential election coming Uh, Pluto will actually still be back in Capricorn in your sign at the time of the election. 
there's a lot of energy, a lot of fire, a lot of um, buzzing. Right? It's like static electricity. You touch a thing and get shocked. But like the other cardinal signs, you have the ability, the strength, the skills to hold that. Right? To be at home in your own skin. To be at home with power. To be at home with leadership. And then, you know, with this Two of Pentacles, it, it has this Cinderella thing going on here. And I feel like you, right, like you decide, you know, screw this. <laughs> I'm not going to participate in this craziness where I have to do X, Y, or Z by midnight. I'm not going to wait around for somebody to show up with a slipper. You know, if I, if I met the prince and I thought he was really awesome and I want him, well, I'm going to go get him. <laughs> right? I'm not. Right? I'm not going to be concerned about somebody else's rules about what happens at midnight or doesn't happen. Right? I am the king of pentacles, people. I mean, and not only am I the king of pentacles, but I am the king of cups. The sea goat. At home, just as at home with the mystical as I am with the practical. Hmm. Epiphany reveal your gifts. <laughs> so maybe this is, right, I don't know what this is for you. Which, which all gifts? Practical gifts? Mystical gifts? Both? But really stepping into that. Totally. Regardless of what anybody else might think or expect of you, Capricorn. You're not interested. Right? You are in the lead space. Aquarius. You know, and this may be, it may be the more mystical aspect, Capricorn. Right, with Saturn moving retrograde through Pisces. That's really coming online for you. But Aquarius, guardians of the land, protection. Look, there's the stag lurking in the background. <laughs> that's Saturn energy. Oh, and there's Uranus, electricity. Your co-guide. Brown bear spirit. Take time out. Five of Wands. Judgment. Four of Swords. Oh, yes, and you got two of these Shadowscapes tarot cards. Everybody else got one, but you wanted two. Oh. <laughs> it's the devil. <laughs> oh, Aquarius. <laughs> well. So you, Aquarius, I think, are holding space. Right? The, the fixed signs holding space for the different, for the change, for the possibility of complete reworking of everything.
All right, we have, right, you are sextile Sagittarius and they're blowing winds of change. You are holding space for that. All right, you have this, because you have this Saturn ability, this fixed nature. Now you have a pragmatic nature. You and Virgo have things in common. You know, you're a, you're a very interesting sign, Aquarius. And it's actually, I, I have, you know, I've often had troubles with Aquarius. Uh, my eighth house cusp sits in Aquarius, and I think that is a big part of it, right? The eighth house is a is a space of discomfort until, until you come into some level of maturity. And, and then you can really, right, then it becomes something really juicy. And I almost, I sort of feel like I just had a moment, Aquarius, where something, I feel like just something just changed for me in my relationship to your energy. We'll see where that goes. But you have this, right? You have this dual nature of Saturn and Uranus. These two planets that seem, you know, particularly at odds, right? The other, the other signs that have two guides Right, Scorpio with Mars and Pluto. And then Pisces with Jupiter and Neptune. Those are more similar. Right, they're different from each other, but there's a there's a greater affinity, a greater simpatico similarity, but you, Saturn and Uranus. So different. Held in one sign. And then there's also the fact that you're the water bearer. So there's this watery element going on too. Even if it's hidden. So you have this ability to hold these contradictory energies when, when you allow that for yourself. Um, I, don't, I don't know if this is really time out so much as just the the solidity and comfortableness, comfortableness, comfort <laughs> of the bear, right? He looks so velvety. You know, you want to like just squish your fingers in his fur and stick your face against his fur. that he, right, that he has the ability to hold things. And here, you know, with, right, with the five of wands, that you could step into this space, that you could be there, even with this emotional turmoil going on between these two people. And then judgment, the, the change, the complete here, right, completely changed environment, right? She's taking one last look before she moves into this completely different space. So the ability to, to help people through what may be radical change. And that comes through here too with the Four of Swords. This the space of kind of being in the core of being um, right in inner strength and peace, right? That space at the center that we all have, but maybe you're unfamiliar with. And then of course the devil, also Saturn, Capricorn, the adversary to the status quo, 
showing up the extra card. Transform the way you see Aquarius. And in doing so, perhaps transform the way others see. Oh, Aquarius. And finally, Pisces. Owl spirit, wisdom. Hmm. Voice, speaking your word. Buffalo spirit, the abundant universe will provide. <laughs> the devil, again. And actually this card, when I drew it out of the deck, um, it kind of spun around on the desk when I put it down. I did actually peek at it before we started the reading because I was curious about what it was. <laughs> and I wasn't surprised to see that it is the devil. So we'll talk a little more about that. Six of Cups. Oh, and the Knight of Pentacles repeating. Interestingly, at the beginning and at the end. So you, Pisces, not surprisingly at all, are kind of where the thing comes together. Right, we've been having this movement from the mutable signs of Gemini finding the way through, choosing, choosing the, the idea, and then Virgo taking that and running with it and creating something really physical. And then Sagittarius taking this whole idea and spreading it everywhere so that there is change. And then now Pisces coming into an integration of that change. Uh, the idea that's sort of coming to me, and it's kind of an interesting uh, example, is right, like the internet or, or the smartphone. Right, it was something that got created and then it got spread. But we didn't, right, we didn't have that Pisces section. We didn't, we didn't learn how to integrate it. It just kind of ran around loose. Right, we, there was nothing, nobody to hold space. At least up until this point. And with Pluto entering Aquarius, I mean, he's there now, he's gonna leave. Uh, I think on September 4th, he exits um, Aquarius and enters, re-enters Capricorn. And then he's in Capricorn on October 11th, I think. He turns direct and then exits Capricorn for the final time on November 19th, I think. And then he's in Aquarius for the next 20 years until 2044. So change is coming to the internet, <laughs> to and to our communal lives through the internet. I have no idea what it's gonna be, I think anybody that tells you that they know uh, is deluded. They may have ideas. 
We might all have ideas, little, maybe we all have little inklings, pieces of the puzzle. But I don't think there's any way to really predict what his passage through Aquarius will do, what it will reveal, what transformations will be triggered. And that there may be something, perhaps something that is beginning now through this period as he retrogrades. I don't know. I do know that my advice, my suggestion, would be to actually not try and predict anything, but to hold a vision that we want. And then maybe it is in Pisces that we can see what that is, right? Because we have wisdom. Right, we have this speaking your word, and I want to say that this is right speaking, kind of in the sort of in the Buddhist sense. Right, not shouting people down, um, not saying whatever comes into our heads at all times. Right, this is guided speech. Right, we had that, where was the parrot? I don't remember now where the parrot went. Was it in Gemini? Maybe it was. Right, watch your words. And then this idea that we have everything, that we have everything that we need. That we don't have to struggle And then there's the devil, the devil spinning up and down, right? How, how do we see, you know, what is, what is our relationship to our own devil? To those things that we find challenging. Also to our, our relationship to change. Because the devil is, right, he's a little bit of both. He's both the way that we hold on to things in that dark side of Saturn, the way that we remain fixed in opinions or habits, but he is also, right, the adversary to the status quo. He is also um, change, right? Saturn. You know, it's not that Saturn is against change. Saturn just wants it to be structured. So it makes sense so that it's not chaos. Um, you know, often when people talk about Pluto and Aquarius, they point out, you know, the various revolutions that occurred. And the French Revolution, right, it was this sort of lovely idea, right? Liberty, equality, brotherhood. But then we had the terror. When who knows how many people were, you know, executed publicly with cheering crowds. Right? That's not Saturnian kind of change, or at least that's that's the dark side, right? That's the, um, you know, fear and, uh, you know, losing control. So how to, you know, how to integrate change wisely. And then interestingly, we have the Six of Cups, which is about the past. So to, right, that we learn from the past, but then we, right, we step out 
from that childhood home and we move outward. And we use that wisdom to envision the future. And then we work towards it steadily. We become dedicated, devoted to the change, to the new vision. Become a loving mirror. And even more than that, there is this, right, this water here, right, and reaching into the water, into the depths, the depths of our own selves, the ability to acknowledge, you know, all the ways that maybe we've, we've been our own worst enemy. But that we, that we don't have to continue that way. That we can integrate these lessons of the past and move into change with wisdom. Oh, well that kind of, I don't know where I expected that to go, but that was interesting. The connectedness of things. I hope that it is helpful to you and that you can find bits of all of the signs if you happen to watch them within yourself as we all have them and to see how you can cultivate all these various energies within your own life. I wish you the very, very best and I will see you next time. So long.